Welcome, Wednesday night Bible study, Living Word Worship Center. God bless all of you. Thank you. Bless you who are watching on Facebook. Thank you for being part of our family here tonight. So we'll be ready in a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, before before we uh, begin with our usual prayers, let me just remind everyone of this the events coming up this Sunday, August fourth, twenty sixth annual Jam for the Lamb. We have um, Bob Duco, who is our guest speaker, uh, WMUZ host, and uh, very uh, well known and and admired speaker. The theme for this Sunday is America's Christian Heritage. So I want you to uh, think on that for a minute. That's, that's the uh, message I selected. But also it's a opportuni an opportunity to dress accordingly if you want to. <laughs> it's, okay to wear, it's okay to wear whatever you want. But, you know, it is going to be a biker Sunday. It's going to be hot rods. It's going to be partying. It's, it's just church. It's a great time. And there's almost nothing, not, nothing wrong you can wear, almost. If you can wear it to Kroger's and not get arrested, you're good. <laughs> you pass. But uh, if you feel like celebrating patriotism and so forth, that's right in uh, line with the theme this Sunday. And also, I want to add, I, this just, I just learned this Sunday, is our good friend uh, John Heidenreich. He is a pretty popular Navy veteran in this area who uh, he stands guard, you might say, or sentry, and salutes people uh, on certain days throughout the year, like the 4th of July, Memorial Day, uh, Veterans Day, September 11th, like that. Okay, so this year he added our event. Wow. So John, John told me, uh, this is not a secret, the, the whole point is to get the news out. So he has, uh, he's taken a day off work, one of his vacation days, and he's gonna be standing out here, probably right in the front, saluting the people as they come in the same way he does, you know, at the restaurant over there on Eureka on these different holidays. So this is a special day. It's a holiday as far as we're concerned. So we're grateful for John. I, I was really surprised that he did that and so happy. He's a great guy. You can't have a better friend. He loves us and we love him. So John will be here as an added attraction <laughs> to the many things that will be going on. Okay, so uh, also, as you know, if you would just look on my Facebook page, I don't have a flyer again. I haven't made one yet since I've been up here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, you know how the day goes. Maybe if you've been here before, we start at 11 o'clock, regular worship time, uh, every Sunday. And uh, we start with a motorcycle ride in the church down the center aisle and so forth and that's how we begin at 11 o'clock and then from there we worship and and then the rest of the day we spend uh, with music and food and fun and lots of stuff for the kids it's just a great fantastic day weather's going to be warm of course it's august but uh, you know we'll try to keep you hydrated and going good and we close up around four in the afternoon, four, something like that, and then finally have it cleaned up by about five. So if, if you go to church somewhere else or you can't make it at 11, feel free to come on out after that and share in the afternoon festivities. Of course, there'll be plenty of food and it's cheap, really cheap. And uh, we have vendors, a few vendors here be doing stuff. Bob Duco will be, uh, He'll have uh, material here available if anybody wants it. And he's, uh, he has some excellent material on the subject matter that he teaches. You won't find anyone who does a better job. And I'm very much looking forward to that. 
He, uh, he was our speaker 20 years ago. So this is like a 20th anniversary uh, for Bob, and I'd be glad to see him again. I see him once in a while just out and about, and I was just listening to him on the radio a few minutes ago. So uh, just be mindful of that. Okay, so this time I want to uh, go before the Lord in prayer. And uh, before I do, are we good in the room here? Or have we, we good to go here? Okay, so I have a couple on my Facebook page uh, the last time I looked. And I have Sarah L. And from Beverly, I have your Aunt Frida yeah. Otto. <coughs> And has some baker. Has okay. Has has some heart issues, and she's requesting prayer. And uh, from Rita Schreier, Kim, a lady uh, whom she knows at the um, health club. Also Joanne from Jackie Wilson, and Benny Edwards from Harold here as well. And from Jeremy as a friend, Dustin Mayberry, he asked us to pray for him. Russ, you have someone? Yeah, Doug Black. Doug? Black. Black. Jenny's younger brother. Jenny's brother? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's remember uh, Marilyn Green and the family. Remember Keith Johnson and Kelly and the family there. Good strength and help of the Lord there. Also, like prayers for uh, Nancy Cagle, friend of mine who is is in hospice care presently, and uh, also for. Gene Rains, who has been struggling a little bit with some probably sinus issues, and she's trying to save herself for Sunday. She don't want to. So I hope you're watching, Gene. St. Gene, in case you don't know who I'm talking about. Okay. And uh, I think that's all. Well, I think of a couple more, but they asked me not to publicize it. Okay. So in the back. Yeah, I just kind of, I don't know if this ties in, but talking about prayer starting before or after church the same. So everybody knows by now who Christian is, and I know that everybody's been praying for him. So he was out at 2 a.m. a couple nights ago after he left work because he was doing Uber and DoorDash trying to make extra money put away. Sure. It's late at night, right? And a semi ran a a red blinking light and almost killed him. By the grace of God, he's great. The car is wrecked. Um, the police can't even believe that the car wasn't flipped over. That he. So thank you to everybody that prays for him here because I know that's why he's alive. That's right. Yeah. Seriously. For, for Christian, you guys got it. Pat, do you have something back there? Yeah. What's her name? Tina. Okay, Tina. Okay. Okay, we good? Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, let's all agree together, and those of you watching on the internet, agree with us if you would, just where you are. Let's pray together now. Our Father who is in heaven, we're so thankful. This is such a special time for us here. We love being here. We love this this chance to come together and just just really just enjoy your presence and to just receive from you all that all that you have planned. And we ask you to minister healing and comfort and strength and and just help people who are really under distress for any reason. We ask your blessing on all of us here as well, on this class, on the services here this week especially, and on all the workers, your special blessing and thanksgiving upon them in the way that only you can. We ask you 
to do these things for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. So at this time, I'm going to ask my pal, Reverend Russ Sands, to come forward and uh, he's going to minister the Word of God to us here tonight. The title is Cursing, Perverse, and Hurtful Talk. And I probably leave the room about now. <laughs> okay, I, I can stand. Yes, I think you're. Repent. I repent. I, re I repent before you start. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. I can tell you now, probably half of it I've given. <laughs> Maybe more. Thank you. You are not by yourself, Bill. I'm sure I've got you. Well, uh, welcome everybody that's here for the study. Uh, in with what pastor preached on Sunday, this kind of follows up with that. And especially since what we've got going on this Sunday, this is very pertinent. <clears throat> we might as well get started. Pastor's gonna write notes so he can come up. <laughs> and uh, give his point of view. But that's okay with me. Anyway, cursing, perverse, and hurtful talk. Our parents have told us to watch your mouth or don't say things like that. These familiar sayings and others we all heard growing up, sarcasm and offensive words, got some of us disciplined, some worse than others. I don't know if you guys know about the switch. When I, I used to, she used to make me, it's like carrying the cross. She'd make me go out and get my own switches. And if they weren't real good ones, she'd march me out there by the ear, pull me out there, get a switch and whip me with it all the way back. So I had to make sure I got good switches, you know. I was ra raised by a speedway, so when we go by the pits, we could hear all kinds of talk going on by the pits, so we learned new words. But you're not allowed to say those words at home, I, we found out. She wore out a bunch of switches on me, so. Anyway, <clears throat> even as adults, we can offend others without knowing it especially with the words of our mouth. One thing seen today is the lack of courtesy, and I'm sure every one of us have seen it. It appears more today than years past. We can offend by our actions as well as by our words. But those who offend with their words will find it can be just as bad or worse for them than the one offended. Proverbs 29, 20. Do you see a man who's hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. That's a kick in the shins right there. Proverbs 10, 31. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. Proverbs 10.32, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. Proverbs 15.4, a, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but the perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. By many scriptures on the subject, God wants us to know just how serious this can be for the offender. By putting forth a greater effort to tame the tongue, the Lord reveals how you can have a better way through life by doing so. This is especially important when you meet people or you're on a job interview or someone comes to your church for the first time. 
how you behave yourself, your actions, your mannerisms, and the words of your mouth just might determine whether they're coming back to that church or not. That's right. <clears throat> this is especially important when you meet people or you're on a job interview, you want to make good impression on them. It's even more important when someone visits your church in our busy lives of serving the Lord, the lack of response or the response itself can be looked upon as offensive to a newcomer. When my wife walked through the doors of this church, this church, she told me, I feel the love of God here. That's how it should be. Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When you know that you know that you know that you're right with God, even your enemies will be at peace with you. Uh, they'll just say, I'll just leave him alone. He's a Jesus freak. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Works for me. Proverbs 15, 26. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but gracious words are pure in his sight. Proverbs 16, 13. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him who speaks what is right. James 3, 10. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. This is not right. Proverbs 16, 23. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Let's sneak over here to page two. Proverbs 19, 1. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Proverbs 4, 20 through 24. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. <clears throat> when we have a righteous lifestyle, we're more healthy. We're, we're more he healthy and, and uh, you know, we have an extension of life there. When you're righteous and you treat your mom and dad with respe respect, the Bible says your days on earth will be long. But if you treat your parents with disrespect, they say only the good die young. No, that's not true. More evil people die young than, than righteous people. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, a perverse lips, put far from thee. This is out of First Russ. <laughs> Proverbs 10, 31 and 32. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh perversity, cursing, swearing, foul language. Ephesians, out of the Good News Bible, Ephesians 5, 3 through 4. Since ye are God's people, it is not right that any matters of sexual immorality or indecency or greed even be mentioned among you, nor is it fitting for you to use language which is obscene, profane, or vulgar. Rather, you should give thanks to God. <clears throat> now, I've taught this teaching once before, but I've added this into it because it really ministered to, to me and everybody I've showed it so far. In Edwin Lewis Cole's book, 
maximize manhood. He, des he describes a situation that he and his wife Nancy went through. He writes, he and his wife Nancy were pastoring a struggling new church in Northern California. In fact, everything about me was struggling, he said. I didn't understand what was happening. I didn't know what to do about it. We were remodeling the building in which we were worshiping in, trying to make it as pleasant as possible. A new maple hardwood floor was being laid, and each spare moment I was working on it to speed the process. With each blow of the hammer, I was pounding out my own personal frustrations. Frustrations towards God, frustrations toward my wife Nancy, frustrations toward a struggling congregation, and toward myself. I told God exactly how I felt. I prayed, you've got to do something. You've got to change this situation. You've got to help me. Change these circumstances. Change Nancy. Change the congregation. God, I need help. God heard my prayer. God answered my prayer. Standing there, bent over, pounding nails, God pushed the rewind button of my mind, and I saw the excerpts of my own words. He reminded me of everything I had been saying about my wife, Nancy. Every demeaning verbal stroke I had given her. Each time I had depreciated her with some comment. Reverend Cole goes on to say, I love my wife dearly, yet because of her convenience as my wife, she became the target of my frustration, the object of my humor, and the scapegoat for my failures. Not always directly, but constant murmuring, and then God showed me her graciousness, her virtues, loveliness, and the beauty of spirit. I saw her as God saw her. I dropped to my knees on that hardwood floor, dropped my hammer, raised my hands and repented and cried out to God to forgive me. He goes on to say, my life changed that day for the better. Now I appreciate the people around me and I do not depreciate anymore. You know, it's, it's a sad thing that the world has a certain percentage of divorces. Well, the church has a certain percentage too. It's not as much as the world, but it's a close second. And it, it shouldn't be that way. And a lot of times, people's, people get married and they think that they'll be with this person and everything's going to come up, roses and stuff like that. <clears throat> but the practicality of the matter is your spouse is a, is a son or daughter of God, whoever that is, and they deserve to be treated like it. And if you don't treat them like it, you're going to go into ruts in life just like Ed Cole did. You'll be in a rut. It'll be hard to climb out, and you have to climb out God's way or you're not getting out. How many men and women, parent and child, have went to their knees to repent for the words of their mouth? I'm sure more times than we think. I'm also sure my knees would be in better shape if at a young age I would have had better knowledge of these scriptural truths. The words of our own mouth will make us or break us. Ephesians 4.29 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let me tell you something. You might deep down in your heart have an intention to help be a, a video for what it's like to have God in you. But if, you, if you're someplace around some people that you think it's comfortable, 
to say something unclean, unkind, perverse, or swear, you just blew your ministry. Your witness is gone. Because I know going to the bike clubs, well, I've been to a lot of them. The highwaymen, the jokers, the coffins. My uncle was one of the first uh, What is it, Grumpy? I mean, uh, Bugsy? He was the, one of the first, uh, what you were? Nomad. He was one of the first nomads of the Iron Coffins. And he made, my mom made him promise to keep me out of the coffins. I had it out of the coffins. Yep. He wouldn't let me join. Or I would have been there. But my mom was his older sister, and she pulled rank in the family, so <laughs> that didn't work. Even Jesus chimes in our vocabulary when make, and makes some surprising statements about mankind's foul mouths. Matthew 12, 34 through 27, 37, brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So don't, don't, don't be like some other doctrines of religion that you can do anything you want. Jesus paid the price for you. No, you're supposed to be like Christ. You're supposed to endeavor in your life to be Christ-like. That when you speak... I'll never forget it, going into Lowe's, and the lady at the register, and I was checking out. She was sitting there, and she was coughing, sniffing. She had a cold. And it's my turn up there. I said, anybody pray for you yet? She said, no. I reached over and grabbed her by both hands and bowed my head and started praying. She ended up crying, but I raised my head back, I kind of opened my eyes a little bit, and I found out everybody in line was standing there with their head bowed. Oh, it, was a, it was a God moment. And just that act right there might have triggered someone that's in that line. Get your butt to church. <clears throat> Proverbs 18.7, a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. The Bible has many scriptures to teach us what is correct and how to conduct ourselves. We are a product of what comes out of our mouths and our wisdom. The Holy Spirit, as we read God's word in this teaching, is at work in all of us, counseling each one of us as to the way of conduct we should pattern our life. Proverbs 19, 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. There's no way you can live and be a part of this world and find good. There's so many people that are well off, well to do, but their soul is filthy and dirty. Praise God. Ephesians 4.29 Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace God's favor to those who hear it. We're supposed to edify one another. 
There's a lot of people in here that come to this on Wednesday night. But we all have a, a thing we have to stand on this Sunday. We got to stand on the Word of God. We got to do good. We got to have fun. But you can have fun without using bad words or, or how you conduct yourself. Your mannerisms can tell someone, someone else about you just as bad as your words do, how you act. Someone asks you to do something and you're busy and all of a sudden you go, man, you know, they're looking at you. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that blew it right there, right there. <clears throat> and you never know, guys that are single, that could be, that could be your future wife that you, you did that in front of, and that's it. Take a hike. <laughs> For the Christian, the greatest way to find wisdom and gain understanding, and this is one thing that our pastor and bishop, Pastor Larry, this is one thing he wants to major on. He wants all of us to read the Bible. Read the Bible. Know what it says in Ephesians. Know what it says in John. Know what it means. He wants you to read the Word of God. The more Word of God you read, the more wisdom you have. It doesn't matter. When I read the Word of God that I've read, from, I've read from Genesis to Revelation, but every time I go over something I haven't read in six months, it's like watching an old movie. Oh, I didn't see that part in the first part, the first part of the movie. It's like see, getting something new out of the Bible all the time because the Bible is alive and God wants you to read the Bible. Okay, where am I at? Okay, for the Christian, the greatest way to find wisdom and gain understanding is to read it in the book of Proverbs. The writer Solomon was the second smartest man to walk the earth, Jesus being the first. Remember, sinners, without God, you can go so deep in sin that they become insensitive to moral right and wrong. You could be in, you could be in front of the Pope and, and, and crack a joke about Two Jews went into a bar. You know, I, I, it, it, won't, it won't register with you. What comes out of our mouth reveals the moral fiber of the person speaking. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof whether it's words leading you separate from God or words leading you to God. How you treat a person you know or a person you don't know is how you treat Jesus. And that's every day of your life. When you treat someone good, kind, and helpful, then you're doing that to Jesus Christ. If you're Ignore them and say, just get away from me. That's what you're saying to Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Proverbs 2015. There is gold in a multitude of rubies, but the lips, the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. God gives us all these scriptures so we will not be stupid. A person that destroys his own witness is stupid. And I'll be the first to tell you, to be cool, when I was in my 20s, I was stupid and I hurt my own witness. God gives us all these scriptures so we won't be stupid. We are to treat our brothers and sisters with respect in the business world and at school and even in the biker world. It is spoken this way, give respect, get respect. That's right. 
If you don't give respect, you will not get respect. Even if it's a friend or a new acquaintance, show some respect. Most kids will show respect to someone that is bigger and willing to kick your butt. However, on the other side, if the bigger, if they're bigger than a younger kid, they act tough like they will beat them up. There are two ways to communicate what you say and how you act in front of people. This is why God is revealing these scriptures to you. The person that doesn't show respect will not amount to much of anything in life. This is what all these scriptures mean. If you're a bully and show no respect, you'll be lucky to get a job at a 7-Eleven. However, if you show respect and courtesy, people will remember you and you will go farther in life than a bully and be much happier. The words that you speak and your behavior show the real person inside of you, your true character. 1 Corinthians 14, 40, that all things be done decently and in order. Proverbs 15, 21, foolishness brings joy to those with no sense. A sensible person stays on the right path. Proverbs 15, 26, the Lord detests evil plans but he delights in pure words. Proverbs 15, 28 to 31. The heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. I'm sure there might be one or two of us in here that have said things out of your mouth before you thought the repercussion that was going to bring to you. <clears throat> the heart of the godly Proverbs 15, 28 through 31, the heart of the godly thinks carefully before speaking. The mouth of the wicked overflows with evil words. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. If you listen to constructive criticism, you will be at home among the wise. Psalm 59, 12, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them be taken in their pride and for cursing and lying which they speak. We are to be renewed in our mind by our relationship with Jesus. And the best way to have that happen is to read your Bible. Some people will read a daily verse instead of reading a half a chapter or a chapter in the Bible. You read your Bible, what is that chapter talking about? Let your mind work on that. Renew your mind. Gain some understanding, enlightenment, and wisdom of God. Praise God. You were at scripture says. I'm sorry? Okay. God's word translation, Romans 12, 2. Do not become like the people of the world. Instead, change the way you think. Then you will always be able to determine what God really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. By loving God, he will, through his grace and power, teach us not only to think right, on the inside, as our outward behavior can be refined, meaning our thoughts, our motives. These thoughts and motives of our hearts need the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Have faith, knowing that God will do his part, transforming us on the inside as we continue to love him. Philippians 2, 13 through 15. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Right now. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, 
innocent lives as children of God, shining bright, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Remember that every word spoken out of your mouth, we will give an account for those words at the judgment seat of Christ. But I, I'd, I'd like to take this a couple moments here. You're, no one likes to laugh and have fun and, and enjoy himself more than me. I love it. I love being around happy people. You know, there's people that are just like, it'll never work, I just know it. You know, they're just... Mr. and Mrs. Negative, you know, I don't like being around them people. You know, they evidently they grew up like that. And you know, we don't know the family situation, but everybody's situation has a hard way. Like Beverly, there's not many people had a harder life than Beverly had, and she's turned out to be able to talk to people about Christ, live a decent life, love her husband and rides a pretty good looking motorcycle. <laughs> and I mean, she went, she went from being kicked around and everything to a, you know, a, a Christian woman, I'm Christian grateful. woman that loves God. I'm grateful that he saved me from myself. Yeah. Yeah, you must have been terrible. I was. I know. But, you know, it's, it's something that we have to consider in life. I learned a long time ago, I guess you might say I'm old school, but when you go in front of someone and the first time you meet them, you let them know the real you, the real you. I've been in front of people when four or five people are standing around telling jokes, nasty, filthy jokes, and the person that's doing like an interview with them is just sitting there just looking at them. Well, that's, that might be fun, but we have, to, we have to look at this, and he'd come up with a different subject, but they always wanted to joke and play around. I got the job because I made a good impression on them. And, and, and I can't tell you what this, this right here today, tonight, with what's coming up here on Sunday is very, very important, even to the least of them. You know, one man stood up one time in John Osteen's church before Joel Osteen took over. And that man stood up. He led one person to Christ. One person. That was John Osteen. John Osteen led thousands to Christ. They got saved in his church. Because this man had proper conduct in front of John Osteen and was preaching the gospel and the good news and did it in a glorious, godly way. John Osteen, look at all the thousands of people that got saved in that church. Now, I, I haven't watched the church a whole lot, Joel Osteen's church, but he, when, he first, when he first took over the church, he put his daddy's shoes on him. He wore his dad's shoes. He said, God's going to tell me i got to fill my daddy's shoes. He wore his dad's shoes in the first month that he preached at the church. And the church is a mega church. Say what you want about it, but still hundreds and thousands of people are still being saved in that church. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. <laughs> That's what it ought to be. We ought to, we ought to bear fruit. Like I said last week, if everyone in this church saved one person, the size of the church would double. Yeah. That's right. Praise God. Yeah. Pastor, can we, we're going to get Pastor to come up. 
welcome our Pastor Larry. Okay. Sure. Um, I, I have to confess that uh, I have time to use bad language overly. Um, the thing that tends to uh, stimulate that is uh, the evidence of all of the terrible evil in this world that is becoming manifest. And uh, when I see things about People like uh, Bill Gates, who in my opinion is the devil incarnate. Uh, yeah. All he wants to do is kill people. Sure. Yeah, I probably don't know myself. Do you have any advice on how to deal with that? Yes, I do. What we need to major up on is the people we know that know God. I'm not going to major up and find out all the idiosyncrasies of someone like Bill Gates. It's, it's a waste of my time. What he does in his life is up to him. We can just say, Lord, forgive me for the thoughts, the thoughts of these people and the evil. The Bible says we're not supposed to envy the evil that are rich. We're not supposed to do that. I wouldn't... I would major up on things that are in your immediate world and not what's on CNN. That's one thing I would do. I recommend that highly. That's a really solid advice. Yeah. Pastor might be able to help you with that too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Put the pressure on me, brother. Hey, I'll get the hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here. Yeah. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. Well, you, you bring up a good point, uh, Jerry. I'm trying to think of a real <laughs> cool way to say this. It's, it's, it's not our business. It's not our call. It's not up to us to judge people we don't even know, to judge anyone. We have a judge who is perfect and never makes a mistake. It's his job. Why would we want to take that job on? Why would we want to be? Why would we want to be God when we had this perfect God over all of us? It's not our call, and I don't care what anyone thinks about any other person. This is shocking, but I think I've accepted it. <laughs> It's possible that people can believe the exact opposite of me. <laughs> as strongly as I believe what I believe. I feel sorry for these people who are all wrong, but... <laughs> you said... You said the right thing, Russ. It's a waste of my time. This is the opposite. This is not. I don't know. How, I don't know how to say this any other way. I've tried to say it every day of my life for forty years. We should just stick with the Word of God. We'd have our hands full. There'd be plenty to do. We'd have plenty to say. That would be edifying. It would build people up. There's not a thing. Number one, 
How do you know that you're right in your judgment? You think, well, I know I'm right. How could I possibly be wrong in my judgment? What I'm telling you is, it's not about making the right judgment. It's about making any judgment. I know this is a silly example. I've used this on occasion. It's sitting in the pew judging the choir. The song is wrong, but you're not the director. It's, it's too slow. It's too fast. <laughs> So you are sitting there passing judgment on the choir director that wasn't even your job. So you have incurred judgment. Why? You didn't need, you wasn't even on that hook. You put yourself on that hook. Faith comes by hearing. There is no way you can form an opinion on anybody like this firsthand. Your opinion had to be formed secondhand, thirdhand, all these that you do not know, even though you think you know, you do not know. Were you an eyewitness? Were you, are you able to read a person's heart? God judges by the heart. That's why that all judgment is off limits for us. I said this Sunday. There is one judge that is appointed, and here's how you know who he is. He was raised from the dead. That would be Jesus Christ. Why go out there and borrow stuff that was never yours to begin with? No one asked you to do. You have nothing to gain and everything to lose. What if you had a better song for the choir director than the choir director? So you're going to get credit for having this better song sitting in the pew. No, you can't because you're not the choir director. <laughs> it's, e it's easy to be the pastor in the pew. <laughs> and the people, the only people I've ever heard, this is, a, this is the truth as far as I can recollect. Anyone who's ever had any kind of criticism for leadership or pastors and things like that have never been a pastor. <laughs> a witness, in order to be valid, has to have eyewitness credibility. You have to have seen it. It's not enough to say, well, I know it because I saw this video. I know for a fact that we are right when we are on the biblical side of anything. And I know this, it, there's nothing more non-biblical than venturing off on these tangents. It's inconceivable that we even would want to do these things. Um, with what? With what criteria can we possibly judge? Russ said it. You know them by their words and their actions. I tell people now, everywhere I go, Brenda's with me. I say, behave, but believe, especially on the believing part. And and they that kind of gets it. That's a, that's a easy kind of soft landing for people, you can tell them to behave, everybody can handle that. If you just come right out and say, believe, yeah. But if you say behave and believe, okay, 
It's kind of like a little, the medicine goes down with a little sugar, is that what it is? Yeah, spoonful of sugar. Spoonful of sugar, yeah. Of the medicine going down. And they right away cheer up and say, oh yeah, I got it, I got it. But you, everything, you, everything I thought about saying, you already said it, Russ. So thanks a lot. Uh, but at the end there, you said probably as important a thing as you could. You said, uh, I don't like being around negative people. There's nothing more contagious than happiness. Happiness breeds happiness. And also, misery loves company. Okay? This is really, if you study, I studied this, I used it in a sermon. It's the devil. It's from, it's from the devil. It's in the play. I, maybe I'll look it back up and bring it out again. It's an extraordinary uh, axiom, or whatever you want to call it. But it's so easy to turn into a negative person. Everything, we see everything negatively. Negative, negative, negative. It is the most toxic thing to your own spirit. It makes you incurable. No one can help you or cheer you up. And it's all they can do just to bear it. It's poison. A merry heart does good like a medicine, the Bible says. And when you, when you name this event here, I'm glad you did because that's exactly what I saw in everything you were saying. This event coming up, I've heard this testimony. Any, anybody who's been coming to this church for very long hears this probably pretty often. But the commentary is always something like, this is such a friendly church. This is a friendly church. Or you can just feel the love there. Or, man, I just, day one, I feel like it, I could just belong. I felt so comfortable there. Now, that is your greatest asset right there. All you need is some hateful person snapping at somebody and if that person is a, a young person or you know maybe not mature or whatever we, it's it's unconscionable it's unconscionable not to not to smile and put on a happy face not fake it should be real and you mentioned that, I'll just say this and then get off the subject. But you know with this, this event we have coming up, and all the time, believe me, what people in the, in the pews on Sunday morning don't realize is everything that happened between last Sunday to this Sunday, just so we could sit here and enjoy the service, it's a lot, believe me it is. It's a lot of work, and thank God for it and for people who have a heart to work but I said this plenty of times, I say it again and I mean it and, and don't challenge me on this because I'm not kidding. If you, if you resent doing anything or if you're gonna gripe or complain about doing it, if I know it, you'll not be permitted to do it. I don't care who you are. If you don't see this as a joy and a privilege and an opportunity I lay my life down for this in pure joy and gladly. I could, I could go anywhere I want to go in the world. I could have anything I want, do anything I want. This is it more than anything else. And I'm not kidding anybody. I'm not kidding on that. You can't be more blessed than that. To be able to say that of anything that could ever enter your mind that you would want to be doing right now you're doing exactly that 
You tell me who is more blessed. How could you be more blessed? It's impossible. Only God can give you that. That is the fruit of His Spirit. That's the fruit of the joy that comes from serving. I don't, if people complain when they work, I don't like it. I don't want to hear it. I, keep, I stay at arm's length because I know not everybody's that mature and I don't want to hurt their feelings either. But I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. People come in here, they have a right. They have an expectation that they're coming into a friendly place. It's a Christian place. Hallelujah. It's not a place where people are going to be snapping at you or short or arguing or giving you a hard time or got anything negative to say. I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say, maybe you have mental illness or something, but once I rule that out, <laughs> that's the end of the story. And I'm, there ain't no second chance after that. But uh, the one thing, I don't, I don't know if you mentioned this or not, Russ, but I've studied this a little bit lately. Uh, James, said, I believe it's James, said, let your yea be yea and your nay, nay. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And we, we spoke on it a little bit a week or two ago, maybe. Um, is that uh, speak what is true. You don't have to jazz it up. You don't have to swear and go on about it. People should know you that when you say something, you say what you mean happily. And you mean it when you say it. And it's reliable. Right. It's reliable. Some people, no matter what they tell you, it means nothing. I mean nothing. <laughs> and you, you soon know that. You know, it's like when some people say, okay, I'll be right there Monday morning and start the job and this and that. And that. They just didn't say what year. <laughs> and you know who they are. But... But, but then I, I mark those people. I smile, I pay them more than they ask, but I never use them again, because I know them. But speak what is true. If you want to, if you, there's all kinds of places you can go look at the life of Moses and Miriam and all that was going on in the desert when the people complained and complained. And the, the leaders, not just Moses, but many of them just prayed to die if this is it. <laughs> <laughs> These people just are, I, I, I can't take all this complaining and murmuring and griping and all that. And so that's, you know the story. And then God uh, instructed Moses to, commi to uh, uh, appoint elders and so forth and take some of this burden off because they were killing him, literally. Such a negative thing. It brought, it brought disease and everything into the camp. Negativity is contrary to the spirit of God. It is poison and toxic to the human spirit. And when the spirit is down in a human, it will take the body down with it. The body without the spirit is dead. Without the living spirit, you are a zombie. You walking around and the clock's just going to tick out on you and that's it. But it is, it's hard work. Many times it's really hard work and it's long and it's days on end. And, but have a joyful, happy spirit. Be glad to do it. And be genuinely glad that people are here. And they're not all that well behaved. So they don't have to measure up to your Gestapo rules. Okay, they're not going to do that. So that's what grace is about when they disobey. They don't need grace when they obey. It's the, it's the knucklehead that needs the grace. <laughs> but I want to read this, that, that one passage. Since I got my brand new blue Berean Bible here in front of me. I think it's in James 5, 12, and if it's not, I won't keep you any longer. I love breaking in a new Bible like this. Seems like everything I'm getting is new now. 
I'll take it. I'll take them all. You got some you don't want? Bring, bring them to us, right, Russ? We'll take it. Uh, five, five, twelve. I think it is. Okay. I don't think you. I don't think you said this, Russ. Maybe you did. if you did, I apologize. Uh, let me see where I want to start here. Okay, let me just let me just preface it and start with verse 10. Brothers, as an example of patience in affliction, when things get rough, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. See how blessed we consider those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance, haven't you? And have seen the outcome from the Lord. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Now, I don't care what you've been through. You haven't been through what Job went through. I don't care who you are. I hope you have. And then verse 12. Above all, my brothers, do not swear. Not by heaven. That's not specifically profanity. But here's, here's what he means by that. Do not swear, not by heaven or earth, or by any other oath, Simply let your yes be yes and your no, no, so that you will not fall under judgment. And then he goes on. I like this next verse. I wish people would read this. Is any of you suffering or sick? He should pray. Not call for prayer. He should pray. It's a good word. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is any one of you sick? Should call for the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. So, always speak the truth. It's so easy. We lie so easily. We have such a prone, uh, downward, almost magnetic draw that makes it so easy to just, when, we're, when people are caught off guard or caught in something and it, maybe it's not that big of a deal, some small matter, it's easy to just say no when Really, it should have been yes. You think, well, it can't hurt. It hurts. It hurts. Every lie has the same source. Every one. The devil is the father of lies. The, and the truth is not in him. When, when he speaks, he lies. It's his native truth language. He has no other, he doesn't have a second language. He is incapable of telling the truth. The devil cannot tell the truth. You say, oh, wait a minute. The devil uh, quoted the scripture to Jesus. That was the truth. No, it wasn't the truth. That was the, the, the fact of scripture saying that. Truth is spiritual. Truth has a motive for telling. People can say, well, it's the truth with an ill motive to deceive. You can, you can tell half the truth and say, well, that's true. It's not the truth unless it's the whole truth. And just to clear it up and finish that, truth is spoken in love. Love is the reason you said it. You may say it's the truth, but if you said it to hurt somebody, you're a liar. And that spirit is the spirit of the liar. It's the same serpent spirit in the Garden of Eden that that's in, ends up in the lake of fire uh, at the other end of the book. It's the motive for saying it. it's not just what we say because you can always justify what you say 
The Bible says, all of a man's ways seem right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the motive. We, we know what they said, but the Lord knows why they said it. So why did you say that? Unless it's edifying, unless it builds up, prophecy edifies, exhorts, and comforts. Unless your speech is seasoned this way, then it is the um, idle words that will not stand in the judgment that Russ mentioned there, okay? Every person has plenty to repent of. Read the book of James. If that doesn't get your attention, you need to be born again. And I'm not kidding. I don't mean belong to church. I mean you need to be born again. If that's if James's book doesn't speak to you about the spirit of truth, James says it is the tongue that is the most evil member of the body. A small thing like the tongue can be like a spark that burns an entire forest down, to paraphrase. Jesus said, it's not what goes in to the man that defiles. Into the mouth that defiles. But what comes out of his mouth is what defiles. So it's what we say, how we say it, and why we say it. Now, this is not a pep rally trying to teach people how to pretend this is a friendly place. I want, I want every one of us to be genuine and then just be yourself, and that's the end of the act. I'll never go for that, nowhere, no way. We don't need to. This is genuine, it's the Spirit of God. Be real. Don't ever offend anybody here for no reason. I don't care what they do. Don't offend the little ones. Not just the little kids, the adults too, because not, not everyone is properly housebroken when they get here. So just remember that, okay? Okay, now I'm just uh, wasting your time. But Russ, excellent job. Thanks for bringing this up. Looking forward to a great weekend. This Sunday, August 4th, once again, John, I mentioned this earlier, our friend John Heidenreich will be here saluting us on Sunday morning. Thank you, John, for that. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.